Happy in July, everybody. Happy July 31st. Hope everyone's doing well. The mastermind. Okay, so we'll so we'll get we'll I'll answer the first question that Colette asked. And then what I also want, okay, because everyone here has either been on the platform for days, for weeks, for months. Okay, maybe you have some people who have been on, been on, been with us for over a year. Okay, so let's talk about wins. Everyone share each other's success stories. Okay, everyone share each other's success stories because it's important to hear the successes that people are having. So if any of you guys have wins to share, like wins in your business, wins with the platform, wins with an interview, you had a great interview, you were, you were scared to, to approach someone and then when you did, they, they thought this is a great idea, they got super into it, they got involved, you got an interview booked. Um, anyone, if you've gotten clients from this, if you've got people to work with, if you've gotten referrals, if you had a good conversation that, that started leaning towards real estate, through the interviews, any successes and wins, please put that in the chat box uh, because that's going to be, you know, really exciting for people to read about. Okay. And we got Deb Sanders on Facebook. Hey, how you doing, Debs? Okay. So question number one is when a business posts a deal on the Park Bench website, how do you repost that deal on other media? Okay, so I'm going to switch my screens. I saw another question come in from Sonia. All right, how can we contact other Park Bench members? Okay, so when you guys log in, all right, you go to your control panel. Okay, so when you guys go to your control panel, right below the top sponsors, you'll see this link called View All Sponsors. If you click on view all sponsors, this is where you can see everybody in the network and you can even message them. And you can see the areas and the brokerage that they're a part of. And so if you wanna type in, okay, uh, Florida, you can see all the Florida realtors. Okay, so this is a really exciting, like this feature is, you know, like who here, put in the chat box, who here pays money just to be a part of a network of realtors? Who here pays money to just be a part of a network of realtors? Put that in the chat box. Let people know what networks you're a part of, what networks you've paid for, how much are they, how many people are in it, okay? Because something that's going to be really exciting to see is that there's already over 800 community-minded realtors, all right, in this database, and it's growing at 100 um, or so every single month. And so as we get bigger, this referral network, the opportunities that you guys are going to have to refer each other business is going to get greater and greater and greater. And I'm really excited about this platform, uh, about this feature. Okay, now, for the deals, all right, so let's take a look at a website. So when your business posts a deal, okay, so let's go to Liberty Village, okay, here's a bunch of deals, all right, say I want to share Panago's deal. What I'm going to do, okay, is I can either copy and paste the URL of the business, okay, and then I just go to Facebook and I share that. I say, hey guys, check out panago pizza in my neighborhood because if you're a new customer you're going to get 20 percent off your first visit and if you've been there write a review and get five dollars off your next visit okay i just copy and paste this or i just share it if i just scroll over you see all these share buttons on the left side if i just click any of these buttons okay it's going to share this page okay so the other thing i can do if i want to be super techie all right is I'm gonna put hashtag deals. And what you'll notice here, if I go to the very top of the page and I go slash Panago Pizza, okay, it brings me to the, the top of the profile. 
If you want to bring people down to the deal section right away, there's a little developer trick and we're going to, we're going to, in the new version, we just, you know, are, are, are brought on a UI UX specialist so that it'll make it, well, we're going to make it easier to share elements of the profile on social media, not just the whole profile, but elements of the profile. But if you want to do it right now, you just put hashtag deals. And as you can notice, it drops the person right down to the deal. So if I copy and paste this URL and put it on Facebook, it's going to send people right to the deals on the profile. But, you know, hey, just share the profile. People will scroll down. They see the deals. It's right below the fold. Okay, so this is how you can share the deals and share the business on Facebook. Good question, Colette. All right, and good question, Sonia. Because it, because I didn't. A lot of people probably did not know where they can easily find contact information for all the realtors in the network. We want you guys to refer each other business. That's why if you guys scroll through the chat box, you see where everyone's from. All right, everyone here is active. Everyone here is engaged. Everyone here is hungry to grow their business. That's why you're here. And you're going to want to send business and network with hungry community minded realtors. Okay. So again, great question. All right. Next up, we got Heidi. The area I'm representing Encinitas has four distinct areas. I currently have four Facebook pages. Can park bench feed all of them? So, Right now, unfortunately, we are not able to, if I go to profile and I go to integrations, right now, we are unable to connect multiple accounts to one realtor's profile, right? So you got, everyone's got one profile, they have one control panel, they have one login email, okay? And, and right now, we, you can only connect one Twitter, one Facebook, one LinkedIn. It is, I literally was had a meeting with the developers on Friday. And I have an, a task in our, what we use, Asana, which is a task management platform. I highly recommend you guys check this out, ASA. It's a really cheap, it's free. It's a free task management platform that if you have a team, if you have assistants, it might be a great one to check out to manage tasks. I literally put a task in there saying we need to have the ability to have multiple accounts linked for social media integrations. So it's on our mind, okay, because you're totally right. We That's a good feature to have. It will come in the future, okay? And when we come up with some timelines for when, I don't know when amongst all the other stuff that, we're, that we have a list of to-dos, um, we will let you know. We will keep you updated. That is a great idea. Okay. Anne-Marie, she's got a win. Anne-Marie's got a win. Congratulations, Anne-Marie. She set up three interviews this afternoon for later this week. Man, just this is exciting to always hear because, you know, yes, like I've, you know, I've, 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 been able to book I myself have been able to book interviews you know like snap my fingers I can pick up the phone I can send some emails on Facebook and just always keep the pipeline full and some realtors also had that same ease but but it's you know naturally some realtors have some struggle right everyone's good at some things not so good at other things and uh, and so it's always great to hear that booking interviews is really easily is really easy and Marie, if I was a, if a follow up, could you please write? How did you book those interviews? Was it on the phone? Was it face to face? Was it email? Was it Facebook? And and what did you say? Why do you think you were able to do it so easily? Share that with everybody. Um, that would be a huge help. Okay, Colette. All right, she said two interview interviewees who are mentioning her. All right, huge win. All right, because that's. You know, let, let's be real. We're, we're doing these interviews to build our database, to build our sphere of influence, to build our pipeline, to find deals along the way, to, and to get these people to start promoting us and talking about us to their customers or their friends and fans. So it's not business yet, but Colette and, and anybody else 
Who would disagree? Put this in the chat box. If anyone disagrees with this, if you had more people mentioning you to other people in person or on social media, would that not lead to business? And, and, and who knows? Those mentions may turn into business down the road. But even if you get keep making that happen, all right, if anyone disagrees with that happening again and again and again, that's going to result in business in the future. All right, you got Debs. Deb Sanders on Facebook, do you have an app? Okay, all right, we got some comments. I got my team helping me out, awesome. The app is coming. We got a designer now, literally an expert who's built products before, started today. It took us so long to find an expert. This guy's been doing user experience and design apps, mobile, desktop design, software design for over a decade. And he finally started today. We finally found his name is Leo. He's going to be awesome addition to the team. Okay. And, uh, and we're designing the app and the development for the app has already started. Now it's going to take a while. Okay. But before to the end of this year, the first version of the app is going to come out. So super excited for that. Okay. Uh, Connie's done some interviews. Awesome. All right. Connie's got a question. How do I correct an interview that I have posted? Okay, so let's check out let's check out the website. So I go to interviews. Okay. If you click on All right, where is Let's check out another profile. Let's see if I did one. Okay, so, so when you're on the blog that you wrote, so I didn't write this one, that's why I can't edit it. If you go to your interview after the fact, okay, this is where you can edit the blog. So let me, let me, let me post one. This is a demo neighborhood. Okay, so I'm going to, if I, if I go to my, my control panel and I'm going to, I'm going to post an interview. Okay. So I'm gonna do a business owner interview, okay? Uh, mastermind training is the business name. You know, King Mastermind is who I'm interviewing. Position is owner, okay? Mastermind at parkbench.com. All right, the neighborhood is the demo. All right, demo neighborhood, you know, these masterminds are is awesome. Everyone's so engaged. Okay, keep it up. Uh, King Mastermind helps people run masterminds. Okay, you know, demand. All right, so I, I pull up some from hard. Really, really hard. All right, so I'm filling out an interview. Okay, I upload an image. Okay, so I'm gonna find I'm gonna find an image. Okay. All right. That's that's a receipt, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm gonna upload this image. Okay this business. All right, there's a picture of me. Okay, business services, that's what he is. Okay, business address, 171 East Liberty Street. Look, Google pulls it up. Okay, phone number 647-555-5555. Meet King Mastermind and run better masterminds. Okay, so post interview. Something hasn't been filled out. Let's see what hasn't been filled out. Bum, bum, bum. Blog video URL. That was bad. Okay, so once I, once I post this interview, okay, we're gonna be able to see Okay, go to the article.
down here. All right. So if I click on this, I can edit the blog post. You see that? All right. So sorry it took me a couple minutes to get to this point. Okay. But this is good. All right. So I wrote this interview. Okay. And then down here, because I'm logged in, only when you're logged in do we can can we connect the user here and the account who's logged in okay and then there's the edit functionality right here okay so hopefully all right that uh that made sense connie okay hopefully now you know if you say i got it all right put that in the chat box Okay, but that's how you do it. So you log in, you go to your interviews, and then there's this edit button, all right, at the bottom. And, uh, and perhaps that is difficult to find. I know it used to be a big blue button that said edit, um, and now we've kind of made it, you know, a little bit cleaner and stuff. Okay, um, so, you know, Maybe maybe that's something we can take a look at for the user experience and for the design. All right, so let's take a look here. Next question. How do I get the profile page info to the interviewee? Okay, so when you create, when you do an interview, Okay, so if we go back to, so what I think you're asking is when, when you do, when you conduct an interview, okay, when you conduct all this information, okay, there's certain information that when you input here, the business name, the interviewee email, okay, the... And then down here, all this data right here, the coupon information, the business image, the website, their address, their category, their Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, phone number, headline, okay, not headline, phone number. All those fields, all those fields create their profile. Okay, the essentials are the ones with the red, with the red asterisks. So phone number, category, address, email and name those are the essentials that must be there in order to create their profile okay so when you say how do i get the profile page info to the interviewee what i would say is is you're going to fill out the basics to get their profile set up so when you submit the interview the basics of their profile will be set up they get an email okay every time you interview someone and you fill out one of these forms if you if you go to the website and this is a, a common you know little mistake that people make if I go do an interview and I submit a blog as the interview I'm not filling in any information about the business name the email their address their category I may be writing that in the blog but but the reason why we have these interviews structured the way that we do is because uh, then we can create the profile from the information. So as long as you fill out one of these forms when you do the interview, then the business will automatically get a profile, then they'll get an email from us with their login information, and we start educating them on how to use the product, how to log in, what features are there available? What, how do they use the deals and the sales and the specials and reviews and reply to reviews? And how do they enhance their profile? Um, and then they can always email us for help. And so then they would log in and then they would add more information to their profile. So when you take a look at a really good profile, like, okay, um, I don't know, there's lots of businesses, but obviously I know my neighborhood. Okay, so when you look at a business, who's got hours, who's got pictures, who's got this information, ratings, who's got deals, who's got reviews, who even replies to some of the reviews, okay? Um, this is because they've, they've logged in, they've added all this information, and that's what you want them to do. You want them to get active. So you just wanna set up the basics for them by giving them, 
you know, the basic profile by filling in the basics in that interview form. And then we teach them and then they can log in and enhance it. So hopefully that answers your question, Donna. If you have a follow-up question or if you want to rephrase that one, uh, please do because they will, they will get an email with their profile page. They will get an email with their login information um, after you submit the interview. Okay. Um, Donna has a good, good point. I don't have a tab called deals. So what we have done, okay, is if your site doesn't have any deals yet, then we don't put a deals tab on there because that would make, th th then, then when people clicked on it, if there was no deals, it would say there's no information and that's a bad user experience. So the system is triggered to add that tab once you've got deals. Once people are offering deals on the site, that tab is added automatically. And it's only added once there is three or more deals. Because if there is just one or two, then it kind of, again, looks stupid. Um, and, and, and so the deals, if you go to the home page, are shown. Okay, if you have less deals to quantify having a deals tab, right? The deals will show up on the homepage, which is good for the business, right? We wanna help the business get, get customers even when the first one or two start using it. But once you've got three or more, we then add the deals tab in the top. So that is why if any of you guys don't see that on your site, um, that, that's the reasoning why, okay? All right, Rebecca. This is great stuff, guys. I hope you guys are, if you guys are having value from this, say yes in the chat box. Give me some feedback. Um, if you want, give me some feedback on, 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 on how you like this. If I can do anything different right now to enhance it, let me know. Okay, but this, I think this is good. All right, Rebecca says, I interviewed my go-to mortgage broker to get my feet wet and work out the kinks. This is my first interview. Awesome. Great best practice, Rebecca. Okay, always, you're right. Like whenever we do something new, who here, when you first did your first listing presentations, did some role playing and mock-ups with people that you knew, right? They weren't even interested in buying a home or selling their home. You just kind of went to them just to practice, okay? So, so interview people, if you're new to this, interview people that you already know, that they know you, they like you, they trust you, because you're, you're like, I want you to be one of the first people I interview for this new community website, because you're my buddy, and I... I want to help you with your business and I want you to be featured and be one of the first ones, you know, and, you know, this is this new initiative I'm doing for, for small businesses and professionals and for the community. And, and I know that if I'm fumbling a bit, you're not going to be too hard on me. Or maybe you will, but at least with a good heart. Uh, so, okay, so, so great best practice to do your interviews. She loved it so much that she took out a sponsored ad on Facebook that links directly to her Park Bench interview. That is amazing. Rebecca, that is a huge win because what you've just got, and, the, and, and, and look at this way she finishes. I now have a stronger relationship with her and free advertising. Okay, so again, guys, this, this is the power behind this. This is why I believe, I believe that as you do this more, you're gonna see all these benefits from it above and beyond I'm, I'm creating content for a website that drives traffic to it and that person I meet may become a client or referral generator. Above and beyond that, Rebecca, you have leveraged, right? And real estate's all about leverage. Everything's about leverage. Mortgage is about leverage. You've leveraged that business owner and their time and their money to get you more branding, to get you more benefit. And, right, this isn't just to meet new people, right? As great as this platform is to meet new people, what's also so great is for people who've been doing real estate for five, 10, 15, 20 plus years, you guys have big databases. And so here's an opportunity to reinvigorate and strengthen the relationship with the people that are already in your database as Rebecca just witnessed, right? Like we're always looking for ways to follow up, right? The statistic is 14 or 17% Less than 20% of people use the same realtor. And that's ridiculous because 
these people are the most likely to want to use you because they've already experienced the benefits of using you. So, but, but, but I get it. I've been in your shoes. I get why that statistic is in place. It's because we all have struggled to find ways to follow up, to find ways to continue to add value in a way that's not salesy and cheesy. We all hate those conversations. I, I, please, does anyone like this conversation? The, hey, Jim, how's it going? Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a long time. Yeah, long time. How's the kids? How's... How's work? Yeah, yeah, the weather's crazy today. Like that stuff is boring, okay? I don't like those conversations, nor do I think that those conversations actually move a person along the spectrum of likelihood to use me and refer me. I mean, that was why this whole thing was great. I was like, I need a way. I got this big database. I got 5,000 Facebook friends or whatever the number was. Um, I'd capped out from, from all my other businesses and stuff. And then, and then I got my phone, I got Google, I got Gmail. It's like, man, I need to tap into this. How do I tap into my networks? How do I reach out to them in a way that's not salesy and cheesy? So great job, Rebecca. That's great to hear. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Sharon's got a question. All right. How do we remove an active listing from our site? My clients are withdrawing for a month so they can do more cleanup. All right, let's get into it. Okay, let's get into it. All right. So when you guys go to your control panel and you go to your listings, okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put add a listing now. Okay. If I when you're in your static, can you guys see? Can you see when I click, it drops down. All right. Okay. Listing type for sale, neighborhood demo. Okay. One seven one East Liberty Street. Okay, MLS, one of the five, six, seven, brokerage, park bench, realty. It might be something in the future. Okay, so when you guys click on the status, you can select coming soon. All right, there's a lot of, who, who here does coming soon listings? This is like a new trend that I've heard from other realtors, and this is why we added this one. Who here does post listings on MLS or on other websites as coming soon. Okay. Let everyone know in the chat box if you do this and why, and if you don't do this and why. Okay. So if you put coming soon, that's going to leave the listing up there, which is good for SEO, but create some, some intrigue because it's not officially for sale yet. Um, and, and, and that will make your clients happier. What you can also do is you can mark it hidden so that it doesn't show up on the front end, okay? So, so when you're editing, so if I was to, when you edit a listing, okay, so I can add this, and if you go here, the listings will show up, and then you can edit them over here on the, on the right side of actions, okay? You just change the status, okay, to coming soon or hidden, um, and that will, change it on the front end for situations like you just talked about Sharon. Okay, so hopefully uh, let me know if that solves the problem for you. Okay, Colette talks about her doing coming soon listings sometimes. All right, next question. Great stuff. All right, Anne-Marie, I posted a message in my neighborhood Facebook group asking if anyone was interested in being interviewed and having a page on my site. This is how Anne-Marie got them. She got five responses, three confirmed. That's awesome. I shared the interview I did of another local business so I could, one, share that page and give them an example. Great job. That's a great way of doing it, okay? I've used Facebook 
DMing, Instagram DMing, Instagram direct messaging is the best platform to direct message right now in social media. People are on Instagram a lot. There's no spam control on Instagram like there is on Facebook now. If you message people that you're not friends with, then it might go to this, this section on Facebook where, where you don't get seen in their, in their inbox. All right, so if I go to Facebook and I click on my messages, Okay. Then, then th th there's like a filter now. Facebook is everyone was doing it so much. Instagram doesn't have this yet. Okay. So they must have changed it. All right. Message requests. Okay. Filter messages. Okay. So, so Instagram is awesome for DMing. Facebook, you still DM on. Twitter, you can DM on. I just, it's just not as effective. Uh, LinkedIn, you can DM on. All right, direct message. And then if you want to be efficient, you can do what Emery did, which is send a message out to your following, send a message out to your friends, L send a message linked to an interview because then they're engaging with some content and there could, they could comment saying, I'd like to be interviewed and raise their hand, right, for this opportunity. And then, uh, Email, phone, and face-to-face. -face. Okay, so great job, Anne-Marie. That's awesome. Good feedback. All right, Mickey. All right, I got a win from Mickey. Went face-to-face -face with two interviews last week. Finished on Saturday. Owners, happy to be included, as they should be. Right, you guys should have this expectation um, that they should be excited to be interviewed, excited to be included, excited to see you. Okay, um, and then you marry that expectation, which everyone knows if you expect to close a listing presentation, you have a much higher chance of doing well and actually closing it if you expect it. If you assume the win, if you assume the sale, that's sales 101. So you have an expectation of when you're booking interviews to get them and to get them quickly, get them easily. But then you want to marry it. I find that this is, a, this is a big thing for me. You want to marry that expectation with appreciation. And when, because when they say yes, which they do 90% plus of the time, you then express this appreciation of, oh, so appreciative of you. I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. I'm so excited to get to know him. So excited to help your business. Um, so, so great job, Mickey. All right, Coley's got a question. What leads to businesses are appointments, not mentions. What would help are call to action links featured up front and center with content rich contributions of interest? Okay. Yeah. So I think I think Coley, you're giving an answer to, to another person's question is. How do people get business? Okay, yes, it's great to be mentioned online, but appointments, the more appointments you're in, the more meetings you're in, the more money will be in your bank account. The more full your schedule is, the more full your bank account will be. Okay. Um, and then you want to make sure that, peop that, that you got calls to action, in your posts, you want to make sure that you got a picture of, of you and that business featured, okay, up front in that interview when you share it. You got lots of branding there. Okay, so good feedback. Thanks, Coley. All right, now Jan asks, if you are posting an event, let's take a look at it. You can only enter a single numeric value. For example, you cannot enter kids are free. Correct. Okay. So um, in the event annotation, you can sometimes put more information. In the description, you can put more information. Right now, you can put free, paid, and prices unknown. We had a meeting because I think we had some feedback for some other realtors 
where we wanted to be able to put because sometimes there's different ticket prices, different ticket values. We didn't just want to say paid. We wanted to actually enter like the amount okay of the price of the tickets and then sometimes there's different tickets like you're denoting to okay so more detailed event listing options all right and 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 this is going to be a fun one all right to get everyone's feedback everyone get super engaged right now everyone get ready to type an answer to this question all right because 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 i have an opinion around about this we have a, a differing of opinions amongst the park bench team about this do we need to build a recurring event function so that you can do you have recurring events and should or have you met businesses who have asked about i'd like to post a recurring event i i every thursday i've got live music i'd like to make a recurring event that shows up on the site and in the newsletter because if you add a recurring event, okay, the pro, the pro is that you and people can add, add recurring events and that saves you time from having to do it again and again and again. On the flip side, okay, um, on the flip side, someone could go on there and post a recurring event daily and then clog up the events feed and then it makes the uh, you know that that is the downside now obviously we can delete that stuff when it's spam but it's definitely going to open up and make it easier for people to spam the site Okay, so do you want an event, recurring event functionality? Yes or no? Put that in the chat box. Let's get some feedback and let's send this feedback to our team and to our developers. All right. Tom asks. All right, let's take a look. Yes, yes. Oh, no, no, a different laptop. We got yes, we got yes, we got yes. All right, Mickey's got recurring events for the community. What recurring events? If you have recurring events, put in the chat box, what are they? What are your recurring events for the community? Let everyone know what your recurring events are. All right, that would be super helpful. Let them know. Perfect. Okay. What is, what are the events that you guys do that are recurring? Um, because if there's a common thread, maybe we can do something to enhance the, 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 the way it's viewed. All right. Farmers markets. Yeah. All right. So everyone put, put your feedback in there about what you do. And I'm going to get on to the next question. Tom did a video interview with a membership director of a development. Awesome. Ended up with six really good two minute videos highlighting the development. Awesome. Who here wants to work with builders? Okay. Right? Like go interview the builders in your area. Go build relationships with the developers, the builders, the architects. If you want to get into that game, you just need a database of people in that game. And then once you have that a database, a deep and strength and strong and, 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 and a quantity of relationships in that space, you're going to get opportunities in that space. Okay, what would be the best timing for uploading these? One a week, two a week? Okay, so great question about, about promoting content about uploading content. Okay. As you know, when you upload content to the site, it's going to show when you upload interviews, it's going to be in the newsletter. So you've just got to think based on how many properties I'm uploading, based on how many interviews I've done, you know, how many do I want showing up in the email newsletter? I think three properties and three 
interviews or uploads is a good number. So you can push it because, hey, man, you developed this content and, and that person's waiting for that content to go live. And I don't want to like, like, like make them wait too long. So I would push the boundaries and, and, and publish three, okay, to five pieces of content a week. If I did five interviews, okay, like, like I'm going to publish all five because that person they're excited, right? You did that interview. They're like, man, I'm so excited. You're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. And, and I'm reminding them, hey, so when I publish this, I'm going to post this on social media. Are you? And they're like, yeah, I'm going to post this on social media. Awesome. If I then wait a week, two weeks, three weeks, like that, that energy goes down. The likelihood of them promoting it goes down. So, you know, in social media, they talk about this frequency of promotion um, and, and everyone's got different rules around it. When you, it, I would publish content on the website as pretty much as soon as I do it. Unless I've got a lot, okay? Maybe the most I would ever post in a week is 10. But if I've done five interviews, if I've done three interviews and two blogs and a couple properties, you know, the person on the other end of the content wants their stuff up ASAP. And that's my client. That's my prospect. That's my relationship. I want to make them happy versus pontificate the potential downsides of posting too much. Because that's all, that's all we all do is we're, we're getting in our head and we're being like, oh, what if, you know, that's too much content. What if, uh, you know, I, I, I post too much on social media. What, what if that people see too much of me on social media? It's like, let's be real. People tune in, turn into social media. There is so much content being promoted that, that, that my lots of posts are probably still going to be dispersed amongst a whole bunch of other posts. And, and I can tell you this, I once published by accident 20 pieces of content at once on social media. I was scheduling a bunch of content and I by accident uh, did not change the day. And then, and, then, and then it all went out at the exact same time. And you know what happened? I got a bunch of messages from people being like, dude, you blew up my Facebook. You're everywhere on my Facebook. And I was like, well, that's awesome. Kind of. I mean, like I am, how often do you get to own a social media feed? So, so obviously I didn't want to do that again and again and again, but it was kind of funny. I got multiple messages from people in my life who were like, what the hell, man? You just blew up my Facebook. You're everywhere. I'm scrolling through my feed. All I can see is your stuff. Uh, what are you doing? And, I, and then I got to make a joke. I made a mistake. It was a good laugh. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Did you even check out some of the content? Okay. What'd you think about the content? Hey, I'm trying to provide better content to my fans. What would you like to know? Like I used it, right? Someone could have looked at people then getting quote unquote angry at me. Uh, for doing it. And I turned it into a positive. I turned it into a positive with, with, with a chance to engage with someone. I got someone to message me. Like that's rare. People don't just message people all the time. So, so what I do know, okay, like everyone's thinking about what if when they do stuff on social media, what if, what I do know without a shadow of a doubt, and, and you can think about this from your own perspective, if I've been interviewed, I want to see that interview ASAP. I want to promote that thing ASAP because that's the only thing I've got in my pipeline. Even if you have five, 10 interviews to promote, I got one. It's about me and that's it. Um, so, so I would, so Tom, you know, I wanted to give some perspective about that. Obviously, I just did a little rant about that. Because, because I hear this all the time from people in social media and I think people need to get out of their heads, you know, and, and just go and just promote and just post. 
and 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 do what you know and what you know is that you and that person are happier when that content is out in the world and and if you get some negative feedback then you really know for the future what to do and what boundaries you have versus what you think you have all right hopefully that was helpful okay David, can the business owner edit their own interview? Yes, they can. The business owner can edit their interview. All right. So when they log in, right? So there's two things that connect to every interview, your email and the business owner's email. So if anyone is, if either one of those accounts are logged in and viewing that interview, either one of you can edit it. And we send out an email uh, to tell businesses if they ever need to update the information or change the information or edit it, they can do so themselves because that saves you and them time, right? So a long time ago, realtors, a, a big mistake that realtors used to do, um, so hopefully no one's doing this, is people would say, hey, Grant, great interview. Um, can I please get a copy of it to read it over before you send it out? And, and I get it, right? Like, this is PR. You know, they or the boss or the franchise or whoever wants to look it over before it goes out. And, and so what I said was, okay. And then I had to type it up on a Word document and then send them that Word document. And then they would have to review it and then send it back to me, and then I would have to upload it. And what happens is, once the our in, interview is in their hands, and it's out of my hands, and it's not on the website, and I can't do anything about it in order for them to edit it, then then I'm I'm forced to maintain thought about it. I have to main, I have to remember that this interview is not up yet; it's out in their hands, and I've got three in other people's hands right now, and. I gotta remember to follow up with them to tell them to just get it done, like, like edit it, approve it, finalize it, get it back to me. I wanna publish it, I wanna help you. And if it's in your email, it's not helping you. And so um, we came up with the solution, which was to build the functionality so that they can edit it. Because then when someone asks that, I go, hey, I totally understand because you obviously wanna make sure this is awesome, all right? I'm obviously not gonna write anything bad about you. Like, I'm only writing good stuff. So maybe I might get a fact or two wrong, but I'm gonna write great stuff about you. And so in order to help you get results from this fast, and in order for us to save back and forth, because if, if I send you the file and then, then you got edited it and you send it back, and then I and then I re and then I you know, fix it, and then you're like, can I read it again? And there's this back and forth, and then you're wasting your headspace thinking about this interview. Park Bench, in their infinite wisdom, okay, made the feature so that you can edit it yourself right on the page. Because even if I send you a Word document, that's not what it looks like on the website. And what you really want is to be able to edit not only the text, but the imagery and the visual and the layout of it, potentially, that's what you may. So you need it on the website in order to effectively edit it to make it exactly how you want it. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna write this interview, make you look awesome, submit it, and then right away, you're gonna get notified, and then you're gonna be able to log in, see it as it is, and then if you want to edit it, because you may not need to, but if you want to edit it, you can edit it on the website so that you fix whatever text you want to fix and you fix whatever visual you want to fix. And then when you press save, you're going to see it again exactly as it's going to appear for all the people who read this. And that's going to help you get what you want as fast as possible. Sound good? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, 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 I, should, I, sh I need to edit it on the website. That's better than editing on a Word document. And so that phraseology of, of, of getting around their objection, which is just a concern, okay? And, and so the feature of them being able to edit their blog on the website actually really does give them what they really want. 
And what it does is it helps you get what you want, which is do the interview, write it up, submit it, give value, post it on social media, and then eliminate the thought from your head so that you can go focus on other stuff because that's what you guys have to do. You got lots of things to focus on and you don't want to cloud yourself you, you know, with, with, this, with this waiting on, waiting on, waiting on, waiting on. I hate waiting on tasks. If you're with me, say hello, say yes, okay? Um, so that, you know, is a quick little tangent that talks about, yes, the business owner can edit their own interview, and why do we have that feature in place? Because it came from a need from the business and from the realtor. Okay, and being able to publish things quickly. Okay. So so David just yeah mentioned right now, he's like he's like, I just made that mistake. Yeah, we all have, right? If you've made that mistake, say I've made that mistake too. We've all made this mistake because we just want to do what's best for them. Like we want to help them. But really, what helps them more is that they get to edit the the blog, not through a Word document, but on the website so they can see the visual of what it looks like on the website in its end product and edit the text at the exact same time and then press save and then get it done as fast as possible. So when you think about what they really want, which is edit the visuals of what it will look like, edit the text and get it done really quickly so they can move on to other things, this feature solves that problem for them. And that's how you get over that request because you're actually meeting it on a higher level. All right. If, that, if everyone gets that, please say, I got it. And I'm going to use it because it's going to happen. You're going to get that 100%. You're going to get that once in a while. Okay, Sonia, she's conducted two interviews. They're talking to their business friends about having me interview them. Amazing. Okay. Right. That's huge. What Sonia talked about right there. Hopefully you all do this. If you want to have a consistent stream of prospect interviews, then you want to make sure at the end of the interview, you ask them, Hey, do you know anyone else who'd like to be featured on this local website? I'm always looking for cool business owners, cool local professionals, teachers, you know, hobbyists, people with a cool story, you know, a cool product, uh, maybe the, oh, and, and the, the, the organizer host for a big event that's happening in the community. So who do you know that would like to be featured and like to get some free PR. Always ask that question at the end. Always, 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 and then you'll lead yourself to future interviews. So great job, Sonia. Okay, now what she, what she says though, they're outside of my area. How do I respond to them to explain that I cannot interview them? So here's the rules around interviewing. You can interview Anyone who services your area, that's the rule. Because if they service your area, then they would want to be featured on your website. Even if their office location, which some businesses don't even have. Um, they don't even have an office location. They're, they're a, a people-based business. They're a professional, right? They just have a home office and they're not necessarily going to promote that office. But if they do have a physical location outside your neighborhood, but they serve the area that you have with us, you can still interview them. Now, they're not the best people to interview because they're not the ones who will most relate to your area, right? The people who have a physical, physical location in your area and the people who actually work and live you know, and serve your area and have a location in your area. They're the best people to interview because like they're going to promote this more. They're friends and fans. When they see this, they're going to be more local to that area. And so you're going to get way more bang for your effort when you do those interviews. However, if you have a friend or if you get introduced to someone 
who's outside your area, but they service your area, therefore they'd like to be featured on your site, you can interview them. What you should also know, okay, and this is fine. Now, your head may trigger, huh, this isn't so good, but really it's good. Because as long as we act in the best interest of the business, as long as we help business owners, then they're gonna wanna help you and they're gonna wanna use the site. So if you interview, let's say, a coffee shop who is in the neighborhood next door, the one you own on Park Bench, but they service your area and the other area, they're not the most ideal person to interview, but if for whatever reason you get introduced to them or you're, they're your friends, you can interview them because they would want to be on your site. They will just also have a profile on another website. Okay, so, and, and when they promote their profile, it will default to the one where their location is physically in. But you can interview them and your interview will be on your neighborhood website and, and not on the other one, okay? So if you get connected that way, it's okay. Now, if they're totally outside your area and they do not service your area, then, then again, connect them with the realtor for the other area. We're one big giant family, and if, and if the site is growing everywhere, it's better for everybody within it, right? We are all against every other realtor out there, right? You guys are all together, you're all one big giant family because you are all exclusive to each other and, and to the network, and, and you got thousands of other competitors to think about. So if you meet someone who wants to be interviewed and featured on a local website, but they're totally outside your area, they do not serve it, then connect them with the realtor because that's, that's a mini referral, right? I'm sure everyone else in this network would love to, to be referred, interview prospects from another realtor who can't interview them, and then you guys become friends, and then you guys start referring each other business, and you guys start working the site together, okay? Um, so, so I would respond if you have that situation, Sonia, where the person is outside your area and, and they don't even serve your area, I would introduce them to the realtor who works the area where their business is in. And if there is no website for that area yet, okay, um, I would see if there's maybe a website nearby that they serve that that realtor could interview them. Um, you know, or I would just tell them, hey, I want you to be successful, so I'm gonna go find a realtor, okay, who, who's, who, who could sponsor that area website, because you know that you're gonna get a referral reward for it, and that realtor that you referred to, to joining is gonna be like, this is awesome, I've already got some interest, and I haven't even started yet, okay? And that's just gonna give you goodwill with, with that realtor, as well as a referral reward from us, and that's gonna give you goodwill with that business because you could also turn that business and just say, hey, do you know any business owners in my area that need help, that need free PR, that need help with promotion, okay? Um, so, so nothing is ever a lost opportunity, right? You can give value to everybody. It's just whether or not you're gonna directly interview them, you know, and such, okay? All right, so. All right, Colette, Colette's comments are not showing up on the screen. So there's a chat box and then there's a question box and, and, uh, and sometimes, and there's a setting in the chat box that you can send messages to everybody or to the admin or, you know, so make sure Colette, it looks, it looks like sometimes you're writing stuff as a, ch as a question, not a chat. So make sure everybody, if you've got, stuff to add, put it in the chat box, not, not as a question, okay? So some other comments, okay? Um, you know, yippee, yeah, got it fixed, all right. Hope everyone makes sense. Dave had a follow-up question, okay? Right now, the business owners are not able to integrate their social media accounts with their park bench, but that is definitely, 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 definitely something that we want to do because 
that helps them promote local content on their Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, which is usually other businesses want to post local content. And then we all know that's going to drive links back to the site so that you guys get more brand exposure. Okay. So a hundred percent that is in the works. Okay. Um, all right. Like, like truth be told, right. To tell you guys the truth, social media platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram, they do not want auto post functionality built on apps and platforms. They want people to have to go on the platform to post it, right? Like just think about if you're in Facebook shoes and LinkedIn and, and Twitter, and this is why sometimes there's bugs. This is why sometimes we have issues with connecting the business account versus the personal account because, uh, uh, right, they think businesses will spam more um, if there's an auto posting API or integration functionality. Like if developers can figure out how to auto post on social media, it will quote unquote, pollute, open up opportunities for pollution, right? For spam. So, so these platforms don't like this stuff. This is a hack, right? Like this is a growth hack. If anyone's ever heard of growth hacking, okay? Um, this is a growth hack that we are 100% doing to, to get you guys more results, okay? So, so, um, just, just that, that's the reality behind all this auto posting stuff. We're definitely going to be pushing the boundaries as much as we possibly can because that's what marketing, that's what new age marketing does. Like you push the boundaries to drive results. Um, that's what technology is good for. But, but give you guys some perspective. Like if, if the auto posting all of a sudden doesn't work, it's usually because, you know, the, the platforms are like, Hey, what's going on here? Um, or they make changes to their platform because lots of companies have built auto posting functionality and they're trying to actually, you know, shut those things down. Um, so, so that, that, that's some insight there. Uh, and thank you, Rebecca for, for right. Great job. Give, give, give Rebecca, anyone else. If you know, if you're from another city, if you're from another state, okay. If you know businesses in other areas, let the people know. Let go. Remember, remember that thing in the control panel where you can find all the realtors. Okay, go to that control panel. Give value to your peers because you know that's going to come back to you. If you know businesses in other cities and states, then go find the sponsors in those areas and and connect them because all you're going to be doing is adding value to your friends who are business owners and professionals and teachers, and you're going to be adding value to realtors and and. Um, Adding value never has a bad ROI long term, right? It's not like you're just going to get a deal right away, but adding value never, I believe, adding value never has a negative ROI long term. It's also good for the soul, right? Which is why then your interactions in life are better, right? It's an indirect ROI too sometimes. Okay, so if anyone disagrees, let's, 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 let's debate. All right, but if you agree, give me an amen. All right, now, great stuff. All right, lots of messaging. Holy, I didn't even got through the con. Yeah, I had other content I was going to share with you guys today, but just so many good questions. Okay. All right, Gina. Everyone, say go, Gina. Get your button gear. Okay. Gina, there, Upen Patel, okay? Google Upen Patel. He's a, a, a lender on the site, okay? Um, at the end of the day, right, like, yes, what Upen's doing is he's actually interviewing realtors and featuring them on the site, okay? And then, and then what he's doing is he's still interviewing other people in related industries. So finance, accounting, you know, um, He's interviewing other people, okay? Mortgage broking and lending, yes, is different, but it's also the same. The bigger your database of real estate agents and people in finance and banking and local business, um, law, legals, right? There's just different industries that maybe you will want, okay? 
um, to focus on. And that's fine, right? Interview different people. Even, even realtor to realtor, right? One realtor is young, wants to work with first time home buyers, they're into health and fitness. Another person's been doing it for 20 years, they wanna work with seniors, you know, and, and they're into arts and theater and, and, and they you know, were a veteran in the past. Like, like everyone's different. And so you're just changing who you interview and who you prospect and who you add value to. Okay, so I wouldn't say that it, that, that, right? So yes, it's different, but everyone's a little bit different and just stay the course. I was in fitness, okay? Like I use this to build my fitness business. Amanda used this to build her real estate business. And I actually got more results than she did. And, and, uh, the, the, the turnover rate for how often people need fitness services is actually less than real estate, right? One in 10 people, one in 15 people need, need to buy or sell a home. Maybe even one in 20 people. One in 20 people do not buy a trainer or go to boot camps or anything like that, right? It's, it's greater, okay? Um, if I owned a gym, maybe the turnover rate would be less, but, but for personal training, for boot camps, for corporate consulting, um, you know, group training, it's less, right? But if you get out there, you build relationships, you get referrals and you get clients directly from those relationships. It, every, every industry, like I can't wait till, you know, down the road, you guys are going to be the leaders and there's going to be, you're going to be able to work with other industries to work, do this with you. And then you're going to end up either making money off them or getting your site for free or heavily discounted, right? We've already talked about this. Like once we complete real estate around the world, we're going to be going to other industries like fitness and mortgage and lending and dog walking and all that stuff. They may not have exclusivity like you guys do, but, um, you will get to work with other people, leverage their time to make the, res the, the site pop and blow up faster. And because you're going to bring them on, I'm not going to want you guys are going to, I'm going to want you guys to find the people that you want to work with. All right. They're going to join you down the side of the page. They're going to pay their fees. We're going to work with them. Um, and you guys are going to get upsides for that. Okay, so um, so that's the future. And so again, every industry, this works for every people, person-based industry, you know, with people-based people, okay? All right. Other questions? Okay, Mary says, her MLS does not allow advanced marketing of listings. Okay, so for Mary and for any other realtor who has the same situation, um, you know, I, 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 I tell, I tell my MLS to read between the lines with my hand. Okay. And I'd be like, this is, you know, for whatever reason, like open it up. Why do other people have it more open, open it up, please. But, uh, but if that's the case, if that's the case. then yeah, then you might have to hide those listings. Then you won't be able to do those coming soon stuff. Um, you know, say la vie, right? Like every, every board's different. Every MLS is different. Um, you know, you just got to play by the rules. All right. All right. Let's take a look. Great stuff, guys. Super engaged. All right. Questions, questions. People are providing great feedback on what to do. Awesome. Okay. So Tom, Tom asks, how do I handle interviews with different individuals from the same company. Okay, good. So the way our system is set up is when you input the same information about a business, all right? So when you go to your interview forms and you input the same business name, the same email, maybe even you have different emails, okay? Interview templates. So you've got, you've got staff members. Okay. So staff members, you, you, the business owner is the first one you do that makes their profile. When you do staff members, it does not make the profile. 
it, it, it just creates the interview. So if you, if you're interviewing multiple people, the first one you'll do as a business owner that will create the profile. Great question, Tom. The second one you do and, and any subsequent ones you do staff members. Okay. And that's where you'll put this out and then you put the position and all that stuff. And our system figures out whether a business profile needs to be created or not based on the information, if it's new or different. Um, so as long as the information is the same and as long as you put it in the staff member, the subsequent interviews, then uh, another profile won't, it won't duplicate the profile, um, but it will add the interview um, because every business just needs one login and one profile. All right, so if you got it, say I got it. All right, hopefully that made sense. If you, if you want me to uh, explain again, please let me know. All right. Colette, my website feeds into my park bench site only once per day at 5 a.m. I was told by support. Website feeds into my park bench site only once per day at 5 a.m. Ah, yes, Colette. So we literally, so, I mean, you, you think about, right? You look at, you look at List Hub and Rebecca, uh, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> you look at List Hub and, and Zillow and Realtor.com. At one point, they only updated their feeds once per day. And then they went to multiple times per day. And these are like billion dollar companies. These are big companies. So the way our system works right now is that we update the information once per day. We are had a meeting with the developers. There's to get technical, there's something called multiple instances. Okay, and this is a terminology in development where you're creating multiple instances of the website so that you can be updating one while the other one is the one that's being shown on the website. And then once the other instance is updated with new information, it is replaced with the current site. And then you end up having so many instances that we can have real time information on the website. Like this is gonna be amazing. Like, like we don't have any competition, right? Like there's no other website that does what we do. And the fur and, and if we and, and when we do, like I'm assuming we'll at some point we'll have competition. There's gotta be people who are gonna try and compete against us and mimic us and copy us and stuff like that. Like this stuff is just working so well. It's so good. Like people are going to copy this. Okay. They're, they're not just going to be able to snap their fingers and create what we've created overnight over the last five years. So this, cause, cause all these other big companies that have more like even list hub to this day only updates every day or every, you know, one or two times a day. But we have amazing developers, and in the future, okay, like we're talking eh, six months, three to six months, okay, because this is a big undertaking. Like this takes a lot of server load, okay. That it requires, and that increases our expenses, so that we have to charge people either more money or we have less money left over to build new features because. You know, Amazon is our is our hosting service, and and the ability to update real time requires more resources from the servers, and that costs more money. So we're we're able to figure out a way to update the information more readily, and eventually get to real time, real time local news. Even the news stations don't do this. Radio doesn't do this. Your, 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 your TV news channels don't do this. Real time, local news, as it's, as it's updated, okay? Um, we are working on this, we know how to do it, and that is coming in the future, okay? So, so, so bear with us, right? Like, the people who come in when, when we have an app, the people who come in and join our network when there's a real estate search, with list hub data on it. The people who come in when there's an app, 
when, 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 when you sponsor your neighborhood, not only do you get a neighborhood website that you sponsor an exclusivity to it, you get an app. <laughs> like you get to be a part of the app. You, you, you get exclusivity to your area in the app. Like these are all things that cost more money. And then we're going to be slowly increasing our prices. You guys are all grandfathered in. Okay. Real time local news. Okay. It costs more money. Therefore, you know, the people in the future will have to pay more for this. And you guys have locked into it. So, so right now it's once daily in the future, it will be changed. And, and that's, you know, the advantages to, to getting in early. Okay. Anybody ever interview your BIC, BIAs in Canada, BICs in the States. Okay. I interviewed my BIC, otherwise known as a BIA in Canada. And it was amazing. I interviewed them, got them on the site. They started using the site. They gave me a free booth at the, at their yearly like block party. And then they sent an email out to the database of businesses. And then I got a bunch of signups from it. Like people who just went to the site and created profiles because I gave them a little blurb. So, um, you know, about, about what the website does for people. So chambers of commerce, business associations, residence associations, BICs, BIAs, um, they, they're all good. Okay. So a BIC, oh, my mistake. David Singh is a, a BIC, is a broker in charge. I thought a, BID, a BIC was a business improvement like chamber. Maybe that's a BID. Is that a BID in the States? Okay, so BIAs are called business improvement associations, business improvement areas in Canada. So they're like chambers of commerce. Um, some areas have chambers of commerce, some areas have BIAs. And then I thought in the States they were called BICs. Uh, or maybe they're called BIDs, uh, but they're awesome people to interview, okay? Um, I don't know anyone who's interviewed a broker in charge. Maybe someone else can answer that question because I don't know yet. But but uh, but if you're okay with interviewing your broker, oh, BNI is an even <laughs> BNI is another one. BNIs are, the, are paid associations. They're great as well. BIAs are great as well. Or BNIs, sorry. BNIs, BIAs, BIDs. We got chambers, BID, BICs. Okay. If you guys want to interview your broker, um, go for it. Now, let's look at some final questions and let's wrap up. Okay. I know you guys, you guys got stuff to do. Uh, so many great questions. Okay. Gina, I would like to start a Park Bench Illinois networking group. A hundred percent. Okay, so reach out. So Gina, go to your go to your profile. Okay, and uh, all right, and look at all the realtors and send them a message. Okay, so I just type in. I go over here and type in Illinois. Okay because I know that there's realtors in Colorado who actually meet face to face and the ones who can't be there face to face come on via Skype. Okay. So I recommend you guys get together with the other realtors in your Metro area, in your County. Okay. Because you guys are all working together. Um, the, the, the more success you all have, the more success we all have. Um, so everyone should be, you know, buddying up with those people next door. They're not competition. I repeat, do not see your fellow park bencher as competition. They are your ally. Yes, technically, you know, you may both want to do the same deal and only one person gets it. But big picture, you guys, um, you know, are together. Upen Patel. Um, you guys are, should be, should be allies. Okay. Next questions. Uh, 
You want to see? You want to see Upen? Here we go. Upen. There's your bunny. He's a mortgage broker. Okay, testimonials. All right, there's Upen, mortgage broker at the Federal Savings Bank. Great guy, great businessman. All right, sharp dude. Okay, can I post my listings even if they're not in my area? Next town over is already taken. Okay, good question, Tom. Yes, long story short, yes. All right, so if you if you go to your back end and add a listing, okay, you know, you can put a listing anywhere. The only question I would ask is, are the people who go to your website, would they be weirded out or unsatisfied or, you know, dislike seeing those listings? Because, yeah, if the listing is in the neighborhood next door or the town next door, but when people are in your neighborhood, they commute there, they travel there, they consider it neighbors. Then when you're showcasing listings, then, you know, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this neighborhood and then the surrounding areas. If that's the way that I think, then, then I would be okay to put my listings up in the, in the surrounding areas. If it's on the other side of the county or the big metro area, like if someone is looking you know, in this neighborhood, they live and work there, they're thinking about buying a property there. You just gotta ask yourself, like, I know my market, I know my clientele, I know my prospect. Would this property be too much of a stretch based on this the, the, the neighborhood that's showing up on? If it is too much of a stretch, because we all know that you get deals all over the place sometimes, then then don't post that one. All right, go to your broker and find other properties to post, right? You don't have to promote your property. You can promote other people's stuff, okay? All right. Anything else? Any other questions before we go? This has been a great mastermind, guys. Uh, I, uh, I did not get a chance to go through my other content, but that's okay. Um, it is, it's gone over time. All right. So, so I want to be respectful for you guys and get you out there. Hopefully, this was some good information that helps you guys get out there and book some interviews today, okay? Get one interview booked and try if you can get one interview done today, right? Database building, the best time to do database building was yesterday, the next best time is today, all right? Now is, after this mastermind, is the best time to quickly send out some messages, to quickly try and book another demo, uh, another interview. All right, to keep filling your pipeline, to keep building relationships, to keep strengthening relationships you already have. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, always ask your coach or email support at parkbench.com. You can call in. We got a toll free. Our response time is less than two hours. That's what the data says. Okay, so um, this is a great, great FAQ today, guys. Uh, hopefully, I was helpful. Hopefully, uh, I was clear. You know, and then it wasn't just a boring question and answer. Hopefully, I, I, I provided some, some insights, some stories, you know, and, and I brought the energy, all right? Every single time I come on these, on these masterminds, I want to give you guys everything I got. I usually finish. My throat usually is a little bit sore after, 
okay? Because I, re I really try to bring the energy so that it's exciting, you know, it keeps your energy up because if your energy is up, it's easier to learn, it's easier to stay attentive um, as you get information because, you know, this could, this information could be displayed in, in a much more boring way. Uh, so thank you, Colette. Hope everyone has a great week. Okay, I'm gonna bounce off this webinar. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your business. I appreciate your attention. Thank you, David. Okay, and and uh, I'll send out an email with some questions I want to ask about what are some other topics that we can talk about on future masterminds. What's some other stuff that you guys want to talk about on future masterminds? Because that's what I'm here for. All right, I'm here for you guys so that you have more results faster with this technology and with this platform. All right. Thanks very much, Tom. Great job today. Lots of great questions. I'm sure other people, you know, have thought of those questions in their head before. So thank you for asking. Thank you for being engaged. And uh, I'll see you next Monday.